And what is up everybody, it is your boy Fire. Thank you once again for tuning in to another video. I'm here to get you a professional result. Let's hop straight into today's video, let's go. But first things first man, today's video is powered by me and our wonderful web store that we have. Check the link in the description man if you really wanna upgrade your mixing game, vocal recording game, or you really wanna get access to some amazing plugins for FL Studio, you can check all of that below. We have our vocal recording course, vocal mixing course, vocal enhancer, you know, we've got the F3000 modulation machine. We just got all sorts of amazing things. And if you really want a all-in-one solution, if you're an up-and-coming artist or maybe an artist looking for, you know, distribution, uh, mastering and things like that, then you can check out Lander. I have a $50 off coupon code for you. In this bundle, you will gain access to Lander's AI mastering machine. This is a now industry standard um, mechanism people have been using for many years now to really get their mixes polished up to an industry standard. Lander also now has a distribution service which can get your music mastered and then put onto all of the various different streaming platforms, YouTube, Tidal, Spotify, you name it. You can get your music all on there. This whole bundle is $100 for you. I got you a $50 coupon code, so definitely check that below. Use the sign up link and you can get your mixes out there quickly. With that being said, let's hop straight into the video. All right, so let's get that powerful mix bus, all right? So obviously, I'm not just the kind of slap together YouTube channel. I love to go in depth. I love to give my reasoning, you know what I mean, for what I do when it comes to mixing and mastering. And this video will be no different, okay? You've come to the right place if you want info. But when it comes to creating a powerful mix bus or a colorful sounding mix bus, you know, there are many benefits to thinking in this way, right? And it's that traditionally, um, when all of the pro mixes or just anyone who utilized a recording space, right? Um, you were mixing into some sort of mix bus, right? It was just the only way to actually work. Even in the 90s when people were mixing into ADAT recorders, cheaper tape machines and things like that, they all had a sound, right? From your big API consoles to your tape machines to your SSL mix buses, they all had a sound. And guess what? These mixes actually mixed into these mix buses. They recorded into these mix buses. They were monitoring through these mix buses and they definitely, you know, imparted a sound or overall character onto um, each and every mix that they did. And this really helped so many people establish a sound because they just knew how the kick would sound. They just knew how that snare would sound. And so there was always a reference to work towards, okay? And in today's world where you can open up a door and have it sound, you know, flat, you know, to me, that's kind of a scary thing because it's almost like you're mixing into a void, right? There are no kind of limits to where you can mix into, right? You know, you don't really distort when you mix a kick too loud, but suddenly when you add that limiter, you know, things just start to sound a lot different, right? And that's not really how you want to work, right? So for me personally, I love um, mixing into a mix bus or creating some sort of, you know, colorful you know, a plugin chain to mix into, whether that's analog, right, hardware, or whether that's into a few plugins here and there. I'm kind of gonna give you a bit of a, you know, um, way to work, right? So the best way to do that, obviously, is to have some sort of existing material to work with. And as you can see right here, we got this really cool smooth jazz mix that I did a while back. And I'll just play you a little bit of it, and then we'll turn off some of these plugins. And I really want you to hear, you know, what it sounds like a bead. We'll talk about what we have. We'll add some color to all of these, just so we can help differentiate what we have going on. And, um, you know, by doing that, hopefully we should be able to, you know, uh, carry over some good info. So let's take a listen. <laughs> Alrighty, so there you go, right? Really cool sounding mix. Now, one thing for me personally that I love the most about this mix is that it has a sense of togetherness, right? For a whole bunch of different elements, okay? This is definitely more complex than just your average hip hop mix, but Again, the theory stays the same. We've got drums, we've got bass, we've got, you know, pianos and keys and synths and those kinds of things, a few sound effects here and there, drum rolls, right? And 
our job as a mixer or as a producer or whatever is to really make sure all of those elements come together. Now, again, all of those elements, all of those buses, right? We've got all these different buses with processing on them, a few EQs here and there and things like that. They all eventually meet at the mix bus. Now, I just have a, a, a raw mix bus there, but everything's happening on this channel, right? Um, but everything comes together and then hits this compressor, okay? From that point on, things go into this stereo enhancer, things go into, or everything goes into a tape machine. Then we've got a little bit of a, ooh, that waves, you know what I mean? Q-Clone bundle right there. You can check this in the description. So many beautiful emulations, you know, so impactful on our sound. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about that just now. Then we run into a limiter, right? Most people would just have the limiter. Okay, fine, right? Maybe you're adding more color on your, your, your groups and stems and things like that. But me personally, like to have that color going on on our mix bus now if you're going to be sending your track out for mastering you can also do this right because at the end of the day as long as you're not over compressing your mix as long as you're not sending your mix to mastering over limited right the mastering engineer is not going to care he's actually he might even enjoy that little bit of compression that you added because it's how you wanted it right he doesn't have to decide how much compression now if you totally don't know you know um, if you can't hear the difference between a fast attack and a slow attack and a, you know what I mean, fast release, slow release, then maybe leave it alone, right? Maybe you don't have the equipment that enables you to listen at such a kind of, um, you know, finite rate. I don't know how to say it. Then maybe leave that alone. But, um, you know, you can definitely make use of things like tape and things like that, right? So let's get into it. So the first thing, man, that comes to mind when I'm thinking, how can I color my mix bus is... I'll mix pretty much about 50, 60% of the way, and then I'll start adding things on based on like, you know, this reasoning that sure, I could maybe compress my drums more, but what happens if I compressed everything together, right? Maybe I want that piano to kind of blend in with that kick, right? I can't do that by just, you know, adding a compressor onto the drum bus, right? But I can do that by adding it onto the mix bus because everything is coming together at that point. That's exactly what I did, right? I got this SPL iron right here, now, standard in mastering or, or um, mix bus processing is to actually have a mid-side um, enhancer, right? Or, you know, mid-side manipulation in some way. Now, what that means, again, this is a little bit advanced. We've got the mid-channel, which is everything that is mono. And then we've got everything on the side channel, which is all of the stereo information. Now, if I solo that out real quick, just listen to the mono. Right, all we are hearing is the mid-side information. And if you can see right there, our mix is mono. Now, if we solo the side channel, we'll just hear stereo information. And that's basically just maybe like the sides of the snare, right? The Or the drum room, uh, we've got the piano and things like that. But we will want to process those two channels differently, okay? And in this case, I really felt that just compressing the piano channel, right, was a bit much wanted to compress that whole side channel. And so I did that. And as you can see, these two meters are gonna react a little bit differently because we are compressing things a little bit differently, right? Right, sounds really cool. If I bypass this, then you'll obviously hear a slight difference. A lot more tame now obviously it's very subtle let me just turn everything off just for the sake of it right right it's a cool mix but it just doesn't have that you know roundedness it doesn't have that extra color it doesn't have that nice lift in the bass and the mid-range and the treble you know once we turn everything back on right we can definitely hear what's going on But it suddenly starts to sound like that mix that we've always wanted, do you know what I mean? And can you see how we can build that sound in conjunction with what we have going on in just our single tracks and our, our groups and things like that, right? So as you can see, a little bit of mid-side compression can definitely add value. Again, you can get really in depth with something like the SPL Iron by changing the different colors, right? So we've got, you know, all the way, I guess this is a characteristic uh, method, not really so much uh, color. But, you know, we can change the way the compressor reacts. We can change the attack and release, you know, of the mid and side channel. We don't have to 
do mid inside, right? It is very much um, dependent on the material we have, but it does help, right? We can, you know, make things mono. We can enhance the stereo with, we can do parallel mixing and things like that. But overall, a compressor will definitely help you kind of manage, you know, um, how the song feels. You know what I mean? It's not so much a saturation thing, but it definitely is a feeling thing, right? You know, if we have a fast attack like we have right here, we're definitely just knocking off a few transients off of the kick and the snare, right? As you can hear. <laughs> Right, even with, with 6 dB of compression, still kind of sounds good, you know, but we're just doing a subtle amount of compression, 1 dB of compression. And that just sounds absolutely amazing, all right? The next thing that we're gonna be doing, a little bit of stereo enhancement. Now I have done a video on this before. All I'm really doing is just, you know, widening out the stereo signal, right? There's nothing really too advanced about that. Don't go overboard when it comes to stereo separation. You don't want to, you know, make the side channel super wide, right? This to me is just something I do after compressing the side channel, just to widen it up a bit, make the song sound a bit more natural. And that really works well, right? But, you know, where things get very um, impactful or coloring on the mix, um, it's gonna be our tape machine, right? The reason why I have three different tape machines up is because they all have such a different sound, okay? Um, turn that off they all have a very kind of different sound now i ended up choosing the tape machine 99 this is from ik multimedia or t-rex and um this to me just has a very nice classic hi-fi sound now why would i use a tape machine on this type of mix well it's a spool jabs type of mix right it's got that classic sound it's got that 90 sound that 80 sound and i want to help you know kind of create that effect right for this artist right here now if i was to turn off the tape machine <laughs> Right, we, we're missing something, you know what I mean? So let's turn that tape machine on. Right, we suddenly get this really nice kind of subtle, soft uh, compression or natural saturation, you know what I mean? That a tape machine can kind of add on to our mix, right? Now just for fun's sake, I'm gonna show you a really aggressive tape machine. This is the 40 or 440. Now this is a much more kind of distorted sounding tape machine. It definitely rolls off a lot of the treble, but listen to the difference between the snare, right? Compared to the other one, right? Right, if you're listening on good quality headphones, you'll hear that the 99 has a much better sound than the 440 in terms of the topping. But again, if you're making lo-fi, you might find that the 440 works better, right? So the tape machine is definitely gonna have a very impactful sound on our overall mix, okay. Now, last but not least, oh man. You know, I did sample some really nice um, mastering converters. We've got the Lavery, we've got the Apogee, we've got Prism Sound, we've got Better Maker Mastering Limiter. Um, we've got a bunch of different other stuff. But for me personally, I love this Apogee Ensemble. Okay, this is a mastering limiter that is commonly used in mastering. You know, you run your mix out the box, you do your processing, you come back in, you hit that mastering converter on the way out and then back in, and it adds a layer of sound, of smoothness onto your mix. And this is just something that I use all the time to just kind of summarize my mix, okay? And especially when I'm not going out the box, okay? As you can see, we didn't use our analog mastering chain this time around. We've just used a compilation of different plugins and that's how we get our mix to sound more colorful, to sound more impactful, to sound more powerful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. You know, as always, definitely check out all of the links below. Definitely, you know, uh, for the sake of this video, check out the Farise collection. This is a Waves Q clone bundle. Uh, you just load this up into your Waves uh, Q clone and you get access to all sorts of different, you know, line amps, real analog line amps, you know, Yuri compressor line amps, right? Different color tones and things like that, you know, and this is definitely going to help you get a better sound. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. I'll check out in the next one. Peace out.